I'm Addy, I'm a lifelong creative, whether I'm creating with spray paint, digital pins, or analog CRTs, I've always been making some sort of art or creative work throughout my entire life, but I haven't always shown it online versus my more technical work I do on my primary YouTube channels focused on tech education and things like that. And this YouTube channel is about changing all of that and actually showing what I do, which meant I needed to take my studio that was primarily built around technical work and video games and those kinds of things, make a little room for my creativity and a little room for me to bounce between my ADHD rabbit holes and fixations. Starting a few months ago, my wife and I upgraded our shed, which was a worn down, falling apart wooden shed. We got a new metal shed, moved all of my workshop stuff out here and worked on transforming this little corner, this little area into a space where I could do more of my creative art stuff and focus on work for this channel, including the AI stuff, but also real art making as well. And the transformation was incredible. We took down the workbench, we took down the pegboard wall, we cleared out a ton of space and turned what was more of a storage corner and just kind of workshop corner into a space where I feel creative and inspired to get in here and actually do stuff. All right, it has been a hell of a weekend getting to this point, but I think I'm ready to show you where we're at. I still, not everything is final. I got some plans I want to show you for the future, and I got a little couple pieces I want to get some feedback on, but I'm excited to show you where we're at. So come, come, come with me. I'm taking you on a road trip. All right, let's take a step beyond the video shooting set to the actual art studio corner here. So this is a corner of my entire garage studio. Of obviously consists of four corners, but the other one is a complete train wreck right now, but dedicated to my normal channel work. We're not going to look at that right now. This is the art side. So obviously the primary illuminated section is the workstation set up for running the Analog Dreams YouTube channel. I have a laptop in that corner on top of a desktop with a storage NAS in there as well that runs the glitch art PC as well as this PC for the art setup. And I went fairly minimal for once, primarily because I'm going to continue building out the tools that I need for it kind of as I go. So this was originally meant to be a Mac setup. So some of the things are kind of meant to be more Mac compatible, but we've got basic things. We got a sick, you know, synth wave style mat, got the K Keychron K3 Slim wireless mechanical keyboard. It's really easy on the hands. I have fragile hands. Uh, Logitech MX Master 2S. This is an older one. It is super gross now, but I have my main one at my main desk. So what can you do? I've got a Wacom Intuos Pro S uh, wireless tablet that I use from time to time set up for here. I've got a Stream Deck. We have an Arctic monitor arm for this Asus 3440 by 1440 ultra wide uh, that also has a USB hub built into it. Sony A7S II with a chunky Canon uh, wide angle lens that I use for my webcam setup here. I've got a low profile mic arm with the Earthworks Ethos. This is a broadcast condenser mic. So it's actually, you know, it's still a condenser. It's still is super easy to gain up, but sounds incredible. That's going into the Elgato Wave XLR. Got a Lexar memory card hub here, and then we have speakers from Logitech. These are super cheap. They're just run through a Thunderbolt dock. Good enough for this setup. 3D printed memory card and flash drive file holder. And then instead of the pegboard, which is what we had before, I went with one of these track shelf systems. Super basic, super, you know, from my childhood but it got the job done for what I wanted, which was some shelves above the desk level that I could over time adjust and customize where everything fit. And this is where the biggest struggle for where things should go has happened. And so my current layout for this is kind of interesting. The top shelves are obviously things I need to get to the least often. So it's still a work in progress. I have a whole bucket full of old CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays that I'm gonna use for crafting projects. Hi, glue gun. It's a head <laughs> fabric paint and a paint roller. I've got a box of items I use for texture for like crafts and diorama kind of stuff that I'm just saving up at the moment. Got some mini CDs and then my new Lazy Susan I showed. And then moving down, we have sketchbooks. We have art books, inspiration books. I love trying to acquire art books that are in my, you know, style, my genre, my niche that I'm interested in, which means I have very few because they're hard to come by. But I mean, VHS cover art, how the heck could I not? And then of course, a couple of Leon, Liam Wong ones, got Adam Savage's book in there, and then a few kind of more academic books on uh, glitch art and things like that. That rock band binder actually has all of my 35 millimeter film. I got some gels for lighting, my clapper for syncing for videos. 
I have this little drawer system that has flash drives, wireless adapter receivers and things like that, that honestly is not a good use of space, but it's kind of good organization for them. Uh, so we're leaving that for now. Then got a couple baskets. This one is adhesives. So I got, well, adhesives and medium. So I have, you know, medium, acrylic medium. We've got Mod Podge, we've got fabric glue, we've got traditional craft bond. Cryline Easy Tack for when I'm doing stencils, something that wears off easier. Basic tacky glue, I got a glue stick in there. Just kind of adhesives and mediums. We got some bottles for paint if I need them, as well as a, uh, you can't see it, but aerosol can for just like smoke and fog for videos. Uh, this is paint stuff, so we have some old rollers I use for texture, squeegee, some, you know, jars, palette knives, those kinds of things. And then theoretically, this is stuff that I need to grab more often. So we have paper divider, well, we got batteries hiding back there. Paper divider with a bunch of stencils, a single palette, a new watercoloring kit. I'm going to try to get into watercoloring, but all my stencils that fit in here. This is a Sony e-ink e-reader that I haven't started using yet, but I just bought off a buddy that I'm super stoked for because it's easier on the eyes. <sighs> this is one of the things I was going to ask about. This is a really cool divider system, but I don't know what to put in it. I got it knowing it would be ex just eternally useful to me and then never figured out what to do with it because take the lid off. It's got little dividers and then it's got three sections here and I was originally set up to use it. I took the wrong part off, but I have a glue stick and a little roller in there. I was originally set up to do this for like collage work and maybe I just need to build up more stuff over time, sort my different collage pieces in the top. Maybe that's still the goal for it. But at the moment it's kind of lonely. Hello. Honestly, this system is kind of annoying, but given that I'm only taking it apart when I want to use like everything in it, theoretically, would be pretty sick. Got this cool 3D printed camera dolly from Mandic really with just a ball head on top. I don't even know if my current R5C would fit on it, but my little Sony's would or something. Hello, focus. Autofocus. There we go. We got pins, markers, scissors, paint brushes, thermal glue or thermal grease for computer stuff. We got tape. We got my Posca markers. We got a couple ongoing project boxes and things like that. Cool little vinyl style tape roller. And then we got drawing pencils, watercolor pencils, pocket knife, a couple prints of my work. But yeah, that is the current organization that I've settled on. I don't know if it's the right answer. I'm always looking for feedback, uh, but that is what I am going with at the moment. I, I really spent so much time trying to narrow down, like, what would I actually use? What would I use most often? What would the flow of that look like? But currently, that's where we're at. Uh, up top. I have a motorized camera slider that is mounted on a wall using a baby plate. It's mounted into studs. Don't be dumb and use anchors on the ceiling and a bird dog NDI uh, box cam up top. Lots of nerdy details about that over on my main channel. The second little mini desk area is dedicated to my glitch art setup. So this top monitor actually runs off my test bench for all the testing I do over on my main channel. Uh, but the rest of it is running off another desktop that's under the computer that I use to output from OBS to my big wall of CRT monitors over there that I still have to finish hooking back up because I unplugged them to move them at one point. But I have all my analog gear that I use for glitch art over here. So I've got the wireless keyboard to control it. I've got the melted electronics chroma corruptor. I've got the mismatcher. I've got a basic dirty mixer, a BPMC video nasty. I've got a basic video edit master plus, a title maker, a preview CRT, I've got BPMC's newer Flexus Duo, but I don't have Eurorack stuff at the moment. I mean, I have some synth stuff that I'm experimenting with, but that's not to connect this in, so I don't really know what to do with that yet. And then I have a big Panasonic video mixer that's great with time-based correction and things like that up here as well. So I can do lots of video mixing and analog glitch art. I have some video dedicated videos coming on that soon. And then plugged into the glitch art PC, I have the Elgato Facecam Pro, which is a 4K60 webcam mounted, pointed down at it for just an overhead, like control room style view for when I start doing live streams again. It's just mounted on a Manfrotto or Impact Magic Arm on these big very poles. They're called Vera poles that go floor to ceiling. So they have a perfect like mounting friction and then got an aperture, just basic easy box light panel up there. Uh, I forget the exact panel name, ALM9 maybe. And then down here, you're not gonna really be able to see it. This is an ongoing project for a cyber deck. 
custom built laptop thing. You can't really see it, but we have a bunch more gear for my glitch art. So that is a big 64 in, 64 out video matrix that routes all of my analog signals to and from my CRTs. That is an SVHS player. So a little higher quality than your standard VSR, VCR. Uh, this is a DVD recorder unit that has a great time-based corrector, which just stabilizes the video signals, another great VCR, and a rack-mounted time-based corrector unit. Haven't quite figured out yet. Huge shout out to my wife for doing all the cable management and routing for that Extron video matrix because I hooked it up as I went when I originally set it up and it was an absolute bear nightmare to work with and they were incredible at doing cable management to get it moved where it is and tidied up and everything's labeled, everything's nice and neat. Whew. The drawers under here aren't super exciting or anything special. Uh, they mostly have older video game stuff in there that I haven't dealt with yet. But this middle drawer has my acrylic paint stuff. So I've actually got some face paint, but then, you know, standard basic acrylic paints, paint pours, brush rinsing jar. It seemed more smarter to have it in a drawer. I think everything Adam Savage's quote, or he quoted someone else that things die, you know, thing, you put thing, things that go in drawers go to die. Uh, is true, but since they're all together, if, I, if I'm if i gonna paint, I'm gonna get them all out. I'm just gonna pull the drawer out and having them take up valuable shelf space when I don't paint every day kind of made sense to me, maybe? I don't know. Oh yeah, I have another Vera pullover on this side with a Godox SL60W budget light with an Aperture Light Dome Mini here blasting me for face cam lighting and things like that. Headphone, USB cables for my little charger over there. Now, this is an unfinished element of the setup in that we have, my dad helped me put in a big HVAC system, like a house HVAC system in my garage here for the studio. And I've covered it up with, obviously it has insulation around it, but with some cool like glitch art looking fabric. And then we've got some spare outfits for the studio, but it's still, it's still, especially down here, like it's a massive eyesore. So my wife and I picked up from a local place called a Habitat for Humanity Restore where they take stuff from old housing projects and stuff. Uh, these are just giant shutter doors, which actually flip open and stuff. And we're going to put the two panels together. They're going to corner this off and we're going to paint some cool stuff on them. And I'm going to try to do a kind of like night and day or opposite effect thing where I can flip the shades and get a different look. So when I'm working here, I get a little something different from time to time. I got clamps for like my GoPros and my 360 cams and things like that for shots when I'm working on this stuff. Got lots of light sticks here. Uh, most of them are na uh, Pavel 2... Uh, I don't remember the exact bottle, but Nanolite Pavel tubes. I just changed the color to an ugly color. I'll just kick that off. Uh, I have a couple, they're called Luminates. It was a Kickstarter. It's already gone away. I can't really do anything from the app for them anymore. It was a complete waste of money. Got some canvases down there, mailing envelopes, cardboard that I'm saving for projects or just backing boards or whatever. Some bigger printer paper and stuff like that hidden behind here. Then we have my pride and joy, my big Husky toolbox. Now I'm not a big toolbox kind of guy, but I needed something that I could store my cameras, my lenses is and things like that. I tried doing the open shelf style. It just wasn't working after I, you know, after the years went by. And so this is a Husky toolbox I got from Home Depot, has the toolbox tabletop, has a big power strip in the side. Um, I've obviously gotten paint and crap on the you know, tabletop, but that's fine. Nice big surface for working, for projects, for shooting B-roll, for, you know, doing art. The top drawer is dedicated to camera equipment. So we've got lenses from all my lens varieties. So we've got modern stuff, vintage stuff, Micro Four Thirds, Canon. I've got film cameras. I've got digital cameras, Super 8. I've got two bags of lens filters, wireless mics, HDMI cables, GoPros and older cams. So this is the majority of like the camera stuff I need to grab and go at any point in time. And then moving down, things get hairy. I talked earlier about my struggles figuring out what to put in these and that has not changed, but I, I'm content with leaving things where they are at the moment. So we got two different utility drawers here. This one now has my bigger stencils that don't fit in the paper divider, um, markers to go on my black tape for labeling things like the texture box up there is super easy to read. Great labeling tip. I also got from Adam Sa Savage, who also probably stole it, or stole it from, I think, uh, Tom Sachs. LTT screwdriver, pliers, protractors, electric screwdriver, calipers, iFixit toolkit, random 
accessories for them, so that, and my switch pod for my camera that I use for most of these shots. Over here we've got hammer for ring resizing, screws, pin backs, ribbon, label maker stuff, calculator for some reason, 3D printer filament, ink for my printer. Like I said, general utility stuff. This is another kind of junk drawer, but it's mostly like batteries, cleaning kits, you know, stuff to support the camera endeavors. And we've got my film drawer, which has all of my film stuff other than the cameras that kind of overflowed over there. So we've got 35 mil film, Instax stuff, 120 film, 8 millimeter video film, mini DV tapes, a couple actual cameras in here, that kind of stuff. We've got a drawer entirely full of notepads and post-its. I don't know if it's the most productive use, but I have a lot of them and I want them at the ready when I go to, you know, grab a new one because I'm a very physical medium kind of guy. And if they're stored in a box buried somewhere, I'm not going to find them and I'm just going to buy new ones. This one contains my own artwork on it, which is freaking dope. This one I got for Christmas for D&D &D notes after I filmed my current one. It is rad as hell as well. One of my favorite Christmas presents this year. This drawer is microphones. I review a lot of microphones over on my tech channel, and I need to keep a lot of them out for comparisons or for when I'm doing random setups like this. Bucket drawer number one is mostly lighting and grip accessories. So we've got, you know, more light sticks, tripod heads, big lights, stuff that I need. It, this was originally packed to the brim and completely useless other than for storage. I moved a lot of that stuff out either to get rid of and donate or to move to long-term storage. So now it's actually useful to keep my lights in here and regularly have them accessible where I need to go. This drawer is a little less useful as I'm I moved my light sticks so they're not exactly lining up. There we go. This is mostly audio stuff. There's a couple, like, there's a gimbal that I never use, a camera cage and a couple mounting things, but it's mostly extra microphones and microphone hardware that I use. I'm still missing one of my wireless lav kits. It's really frustrating. For this workbench setup, the whole thing that we just mounted over on the vlog, updating things over on my main channel, I now have an Aperture 200X, which is a bicolor light. I use 4500 Kelvin as my lighting color because it makes my skin look the best IMO. Aperture Light Dome Mini. This is on a big baby plate, again, mounted to the ceiling with a triple arm splitter here. Got another one of those box cams pointing straight down, and then I will be hanging, I'll have B-roll of it. By the time this video is up, a projector that I will be pointing down so I can project down for assisting in drawing things. I do have a GoPro mounted on the arm here, as well as a shotgun mic I will hook up eventually. We're getting some better audio while I'm over here. Just all the camera angles I could possibly have. And then back here is completely unfinished, but I'm pretty stoked with the idea of. This is where my Canon giant photo printer, it's the IP8720. I've got canvas storage, I got spray paint accessories, I've got my drawer system for random odds and ends like thread adapters for camera gear, feet to put on boxes, video adapters, that kind of stuff. We have a bunch of stuff that is still unsorted, uh, but bigger canvases and stuff go here as well. And then I have my drawer system with a big charging station up top. And my drawer system has all my different like printer papers, labels, sticker paper, thing like, things like that that I would then be printing on. I love this printer so far. Has a quite a few headaches uh, going on with it that I wanna make some videos on. Uh, but yeah, like I said, wardrobe and mouse mat storage. And then back there, I am gonna set up a little bit of a 3D printing farm back there. Currently super dark, you can't see anything. Uh, but the printers I have back there are not the ones that will stay there. Okay, wait, wait, I never actually addressed my spray paint problem. So for the time being, since I need to keep my spray paint inside, I have one of these wooden crates. They sell them at all kinds of craft stores and craft sections, you know them. They came on the walls of our house and we tore that down because this is some white people having live, laugh, love written on their walls kind of crap, but they are useful crates. And so they hold these cans very well. Got some overflow in the box that some of them shipped in. Accessories there, some black canvas there. Not the most ideal solution, but it's it's holding. Uh, obviously it's a problem if I need to pull one out of the middle, uh, but I just added a bunch of Montana black and golds to my Rust-Oleum reliable collection, so this'll do for now. We'll also accept suggestions on what the heck I'm doing with this, because I got no idea. And for the purposes of, you know, the art discussion, because we do have like my paper backdrop for my videos and blah, blah, blah. But for the purposes of, you know, this channel's work, that's kind of it. This is my ADHD art setup and that 
it's a big struggle, but I think I've made a good use of the space to help. The goal is to give me stations to do everything I want. So I've got 3D printing stuff. I've got my glitch art. I've got my physical painting and my camera work and my film photography and my photo editing and AI art generation and my inspiration. Like the goal is to have me setups for everything I want to do on a whim. And then of course my main channel work on a whim as I go as well. Not to mention you can't really see it, but all the gaming stuff over there. So super curious to hear your thoughts. And there is the full studio. If you've been enjoying this tour and you want more juicy details, part one and part two are combined into an extended cut that has a lot more extra details, setup, and things like that over on my own exclusive video streaming site, Nebula. Nebula is creator owned, and when you sign up for an annual subscription, immediately one third of what you pay goes straight to me to help support my work. It is the best way to support my work and my channel and the videos I make, things like that. And the rest of the revenue goes to building out this awesome site and supporting the awesome creators over on Nebula, as Nebula has a full gamut of awesome, uh, uh, smart, thoughtful creators. Lindsay Ellis, uh, Legal Eagle, Thomas Frank, Renee Ritchie, Low Spec Gamer, so many awesome people over there. And like I said, it's creator owned. So we're really just kind of building this as a community initiative where we all just take part in building something amazing. And all of my videos tend to be early there as well. So while part one and part two were uploaded at the same time as part of this extended cut, at the time of watching, I already have a whole extra video about my creative process of learning to make awesome spray paint nebulas and galaxies. So you should check that out. Link in the description below. This is maybe not as formal as I had intended to originally share it with you, but I'm so curious to hear your thoughts. And if you're new to the channel, welcome aboard. This channel has been exploding over the past few months, which is why I, I, I kind of wanted to get, go ahead and get this out here because I was planning, you know, we started on the renovation for the studio a few months ago and I had, I was expecting a little bit of a slower burn for this channel. So I had less, you know, rush to start doing stuff. And then it suddenly kind of blew up overnight, so to speak, over the holiday. And yeah, a lot of stuff coming soon. Really hope you enjoyed. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for your support. I am. I, I've always wanted the ability to run multiple channels on my varying interests and kind of balance out my rabbit holing. And this is the first time I'm really able to do that. And it means the world to me. I'm Addy. This is Analog Dreams. Remember to be kind. Rewind.